Thank you. You're back, Mr. Chairman. Chair, I could ask Mr. Fallon for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. If there was ever, you know, if there's ever a time where our government becomes the sole arbiter of truth, then we've lost the United States. Twitter's become the virtual town square. It now has the power to transform public opinion like no other medium in history, with their algorithms shaping and molding the public mind to their own ends. Mr. Roth, to the best of your knowledge, what percentage of your colleagues when you worked at Twitter donated to Democratic causes or candidates in 2020? I don't know, sir. Uh, we have it here. It was 98.4% of Twitter employees gave to Democratic candidates or causes in the 2020 election cycle. And believe it or not, those numbers actually went up in the 2022 cycle to 99.7% of Twitter employees donating to Democratic candidates and causes. So clearly, Twitter as a whole had a political bias. Mr. Roth, do you personally think that you have a political bias? And did you have one when you worked at Twitter? A pl personal political bias? No, sir. As you didn't. You, that's, that's remarkable because it's pretty obvious you did have strong biases compared, when you compared, ironically using Twitter, people that worked in the Trump White House to Nazis. They were good folks that you simply disagreed with politically in our representative republic and you compared them to the most evil people on the planet that murdered 60 million people, or at least were responsible for those deaths. You think that was a little bit hyperbolic? Yes, I do. As I yeah, said, I regret I agree. the language. I agree with you. Tweet. It was. And so your political opinion spilled over into censorship work at Twitter. I think your biases had consequences, which you intentionally expressed through your propaganda and censorship role at Twitter. Additionally, you may have collaborated with the U.S. intelligence community regarding stories that you all didn't want the public to see. So namely, what we refer to as the Hunter Biden laptop story that ran in the New York Post. So I'll ask you, Mr. Roth, did you receive 10 confidential documents from special agent for the FBI, Elvis Chan, the night before the Hunter Biden laptop story ran? Yes. You did. See, because it's interesting, with the immediacy with which you all acted to censor the New York Post Hunter Biden laptop story seems to be very indicative of foreknowledge. And the story was seismic. And it was rushed to be suppressed, knowing full well it was not Russian disinformation, as some here said. It was truth that was denied the American voter. And the Media Research Center polled Democratic voters in 2020 swing states and found that 17% would have changed their vote if they had known the contents and evidence of the New York Post story. President Trump lost key states, Georgia, Pennsylvania, Arizona, and Wisconsin, by collectively just over 100,000 votes. And if this is accurate, this poll, 3.2 million votes could have swung. And he only needed a teeny fraction of those 3.2 million. That decision almost certainly changed the result of the 2020 presidential election. Did you have any idea of the contents of the New York Post story, Mr. Roth? Only what I read in the New York Post that day. And then it was killed by Twitter, and the mainstream media followed. So I found this interesting. In 2019, candidate for president Joe Biden said, and I quote, I have never spoken to my son about his overseas business dealing. And yet the evidence in that story and on that laptop revealed that two of Hunter's Mexican business associates, Miguel Magnati and Manel Miguel Velasco, visited the White House in February 2014. And he was later photographed, Joe Biden was photographed with him in the White House. Also in October 2015, Hunter arranged a video conference with his dad Joe Biden, the sitting vice president, and Carlos Slim, the Mexican billionaire. And then unbelievably, in 2015, Hunter introduced his father, then vice president, to Vedam Pazarsky, an executive at the now infamous Versima Holdings Company, where Hunter would later magically make millions as a board member, despite having no experience whatsoever in the energy sector. Joe Biden lied. He created the firewall, and then he was exposed because of this story and other information. He lied to the American people. And Mr. Roth, you withheld information on the eve of a presidential election, and you protected that lie. And I hope for the sake of the country that men like you that do those things, men and women, never get to put in such power, in positions of power again. And Mr. Chairman, I'd also like to see if, uh, I'd like to ask unanimous, unanimous consent to enter into the record a tweet from ranking member Raskin. The tweet reads, it's horrifying to see images of Border Patrol agents whipping Haitian refugees at the Texas border. Not exactly the feeling I get for that. Without, without objection. So ordered. Thank you. Would you, I yield back. Back. Would you yield? Yep. Oh, and, well, I just think that's misinformation, or at least it was a mis mistake. And Twitter left it up for a, a week, or not a week, a year, a full year. Gentlemen, yield some.
I yelled, Mr. 